Mr. President, act. No, not act in a way that you don't see the people's problems while you stay in a place where electricity, fuel, and food are not a scarcity. But rather act in a manner where you take proper decisions, immediate decisions, to take prudent and calculated steps to solve the problems at hand. No, not act in a way where you slap the 6.9 million people across their face who entrusted you their lives by not acting and your silence. But please do act in a manner that you still care about this country and the trust that they have kept in you. And no, not act in a way where we, when push comes to shove, you choose your family over 21 million people who call you their leader. But act in a manner in case your family is the hindrance to get to your goals. Letting them go to do the right thing would not make you lose a family. Instead, you will gain a more prominent family, 21 million of them. And no, not act in a way that you simply don't care. I don't have to tell you how bad things are. You know it for sure. After all, the mob came to your doorstep. Although this mob was very evidently uh, that they were politically motivated and didn't understand the basics of economics, but were using your inaction to launch their nefarious agendas. What people can't understand is why are you silent? Why are you inactive? Yes, we are told that you are working behind closed doors. Still, at a time of a crisis, a nation needs to seek its leader working hard and among them, going through the same challenges, but doing his best to fix them. You are not a coward who slowly withered away in the face of challenges. You're not a weakling to retreat at a time of crisis. On the contrary, you are the person who gave hope to a military that was told that they were not good. You are the person who exalted a fighting force that was said, uh, they are une uneducated buffoons who merely passed grade eight. So what we see right now doesn't correspond with the person you said you were going to be when you are president. When a pilot is set to travel from one destination to another, there are several things he would do. He would check his aircraft, make sure it's fueled up, and ensure all safety protocols were followed before the flight. He knows uh, until the destination that it's his and his responsibility alone to take care of his passengers. Their lives are literally in his hands. Before takeoff, he will check the flight path, design the travel method, and check the weather. Then based on how the weather is, he will inform the passengers whether it will be a bumpy ride or smooth flying ahead. It's vital to tell your passengers the, the importance of what they will go through so they can prepare and not be surprised. Once you take off, you, of course, things will not be precisely the same. You will have turbulence. You will have unexpected cloud cover, cover unexpected weather. However, all is not lost because all pilots are trained and trained well to take care of instances like that, prepared and ready. So when you come across surprising events like that, instead of panicking, you would make minor course corrections to ensure you take the safest routes to the destination. Take each and every one of your passengers to the destination safe. In some instances, you encounter areas where you would not have any visual cues. For example, you can't see the horizon or rain cloud surrounds you. And you do not know whether you are flying straight or up into the air or down below. In, in an instant like that, Pilots are trained to do one thing, to navigate out of the dark clouds to safety and to understand whether you are on track. One thing alone, that is to trust their instruments, to trust what their instruments are telling them. Read them right and instead of panicking, just continue smoothly. That's why when we fly, we suddenly hear the captain on the speaker saying, put on your seat bells, we are experiencing turbulent weather. We clearly see the seat bell sign coming in. And we take necessary precautions. Mr. President, that's what's missing. You didn't switch on the seat bell sign and nor did you take necessary steps to calm your passengers. 
Mr. President, your instrument that you need to trust is your vistas of prosperity. You told the people that you would lead them to a better world through that. The people themselves approved that instrument and told you to lead the way. Right now, when there's a turbulence, dark clouds and bad weather in our path, don't panic and start changing everything or listen to the jester in the flight and get advice from him on how to fly the plane. The best person who knows to drive us out of this crisis is you as this nation's leader. And instead of listening to every Tom, Dick and Harry who has a proven track record of crashing the plane, just trust your own instruments. Trust your own vistas of prosperity because we, your passengers, still haven't lost trust. Unfortunately, however, we see you have lost confidence in your own for a moment. At least listen to the people who got you there to the top. Vistas of Prosperity uh, had a vision where we want to go. We wanted Sri Lanka to be a developed country, long-term vision. And we, we told the path to go there, the strategy to go there. Even in a corporate situation or in a war situation, you may have a strategy to achieve a particular goal. But when you go uh, along the way, you can come across obstacles that you never anticipated, situations which are totally new. Then what do you do? You, you change your tactics. You get into certain different tactical approach, deviate from the strategy, but you have to finally get back to the original, to the original, pa original path. I think even right now, I think this is what we need to do. We are in a crisis situation, unanticipated or not, you can't say unanticipated also because I think when you are in the finance management, you see these numbers and you have, you should be able to project, so you can't say unanticipated, but probably the culmination of so many different issues, but now, you need two things. One, firstly, you need short-term solutions to get out of that, which is a difficult task. Everybody will have to suffer no matter what until we get out of this crisis. We must pay, let people understand there's no quick fix. You can't go into a revolution tomorrow uh, and solve that problem. Mm -hmm. You have to find short-term solutions and I think about that certain idea is already there. Then you come back to mm -hmm. the long-term solution we already proposed. I, I still don't think there's a problem with the document if we did what was there. Viyatmaga mehme adude mata viyatmage hitapu kattiya gen calls panahak pitarawa. Okkomallama viyatmaga ta enawa tiya me rate indawat kemathi nae den. E kiyanne api api karapu hama dema aurudu pahak tisse api karapu hama dema wature kiyala thamai kattiya kiyanne. My dear Mr President, it's time to act. Me velawedi පහුගිය ආණ්ඩුව විනාශ වීම සඳහා බලපෑ ප්‍රධාන සාධකයක් ලෙස සලකර එක් රාජපක්ෂ චරිතයක් බැසිල් මහත්තයා එතුමා නැවතත් ආණ්ඩුවට ඇවිල්ලා ඒ හරහා මේ හැටනම ලක්ෂයක් විතරක් නෙමෙයි මුළු මහ දේශයේ ආදරය කරන සියලුම ජනතාවගේ උත්තරීතර අභිලාෂයට හානියක් වෙයි කියලා බයක් සැකයක් පෙරදැක්මක් මහ සංග්‍රත්නේ සහ හැමෝ අතරම තිබ්බා හැබැයි ඒ අදහස තුට්ටුවකට මායින් කරන්නේ නැතුව දිත්ත පුරවේ ස්වභාවය දේශපාලනයට බාධාවක් නොකරගත්තා සේම නොකර යුතුව පැවති ලොකුම වැරැද්ද අඬුව කරගත්තා හැබැයි අද මේ වෙනකොට තමන්ගේ ඔය අපි කියපු කාරණාවල් අමතක කිරීම නිසා ඇති වෙච්ච තත්ත්වය අහිංසක රටක මිනිස්සුන්ගේ විශාල වේදනාවල් බවට පත් වෙලා තියෙනවා අහිංසක රටක මිනිස්සු හඬා වැළපෙන තත්ත්වයට පත් වෙලා තියෙනවා අපි උදේ නැකිරින හාමුදුරුනේ කවුරු හරි මේ රටට මොකද වෙන්නේ හාමුදුරුනේ කියලා අහන දුරකතන පණිවිඩය දැන්වත් වෙනස් වුණොත් තවදුරටත් මේ අහිතකර වැඩපිළිවෙලෙන් ගැලවෙන්න පුළුවන් එදා ගෝඨාභය සහ සජිත් ප්‍රේමදාස කියන දෙන්න අතරින් බලයට ගත යුත්තේ කවුද කියන එක තීරණය කළා වගේම මහා සංගරත්නය වර්තමානයේ මොවුන් කරන ක්‍රියාවල් බලාගෙන ඉඳලා ගත යුතු ක්‍රියා මාර්ග මොනවද කියන එක පිළිබඳව තීරණය කිරීමට මහා සංගරත්නය පෙනී හිටිනවා well, I have some words for those individuals who thought by going to the president's home and screaming, go home, Gota. 
when he's already at home. What exactly did you expect? That President Gotabe Rajapaksa will come out and resign and hand over the government and the country to your Lord and Saviour Sajid Premadasa or Andhra Kumar Udhisanayaka. And then voila, fuel oozes into petrol sheds, gas is going to be automatically filled into our tanks and ships will forcefully come to Sri Lanka and hand us oil. More so, Governor Ajit Nivad Kabra will suddenly find billions of dollars in our reserves. Please stop acting like an idiot and learn a bit of economics. We don't have gas, oil, fuel and the real crisis at hand is because all our leaders mismanaged the economy for many, many years. And we are at the tail end of that disaster. But because you are inconvenienced and uncomfortable and you use a medium to show your frustration, know that some people will use that to launch their nefarious agenda. You will be caught in the midst. Stop kidding and let's start finding real solutions. If a change of governments or presidents would bring in the answer, I promise you I would be the first to rally everyone to go protest. You still understand that there are people who believe in this president as well, right? What happens when they start to show their might and power? Are you going to keep fighting them too? Is that your solution? I understand you are angry, so am I. Anger never solved problems ever in the history of this universe. It only created more. You are angry? Well, take it to the ballot box. We'll be right back.